since we were born, since the day when we gave our life to Jesus, there is a battle in our mind for having the control precisely of our mind. And I want uh, you to think in this, because sometimes we say this sentence and not everybody grabs it, the battle for our mind. It says in Galatians 5.16, live by the Spirit and don't follow the desires of the flesh, because the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit desires what is contrary to the flesh. Both oppose each other in such a way that you cannot do what you want. There is a battle in our minds for our mind. Well, this year when it was being analyzed the decriminalization of abortion in our nation, a person of influence suggested that in cases of abuse, of ignorance or mistreat, it was justified abortion. And that person was a Christian. But even though she's Christian, there are parts in her mind that still continue being controlled by the enemy. And one of the purposes of our preach is that the people change the way they think. But if people like the one who said this do not gather if they do not agree with what we preach, because we can preach, and many can be there opposing, if they do not read the Bible, if they do not pray, and if they do not renounce two thoughts that are contrary to the Word of God, they are going to say silly things like this. It's just that the enemy continues governing the mind of many Christians. And he does it because from before they knew the Lord, the enemy conquered certain areas in their minds. Or maybe because today they continue conforming themselves or imitating or living according to the customs of this world but also because they never have pressed that button on the computer that we hate because sometimes we erase everything by mistake. But this is what we have to do with our mind when we receive Jesus. We must press the button of delete, of suppress, delete those thoughts. When we receive Jesus as our Savior, in immediately we were moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the light. Colossians 1.13 because he, it's speaking about God, rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and moved us to the kingdom of his beloved son who bought our freedom and forgave our sins. Nevertheless, our memories, what we learned, and what the enemy achieved to get in our mind before knowing Jesus was left there. Things like, I am a sinner. It's just that we men are adulterous. Or I am uh, bad-tempered or alcoholic or I'm rubbish or I'm a poor person I am worthless I am a loser I am sick I'm going to die I am afraid I'm anxious 
I'm depressive. All those thoughts were left there. And the following verses show precisely the control that the enemy has upon those who do not know the Lord, which means the control that they had upon us before giving our lives to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the mind of those who do not believe. They are incapable of seeing the glorious light of the good news they do not understand. It has to do with the mind, this message. Another verse, Ephesians 4.17, Paul tells us, and the Lord through Paul, I no longer live as those that do not know the Lord because they are hopelessly confused, the mind. And then it says, they have their mind full of darkness. They vague, far away from life that God offers because they closed their mind and hardened the heart. This same verse, in another version, in King James Version, all of us live, here it speaks before knowing Christ, in the desires of our flesh, doing the will of the flesh and of the thoughts. So, this was before knowing Jesus. This is what we call mental strongholds. We find it in 2 Corinthians 10.3 where it speaks to us of the spiritual weapons that with which we Christians fight. They're not from the world, but they have the supernatural power to tear down strongholds. And those words, strongholds, has to do with prisons, mental prisons. If we understand this, we will be free. Mental strongholds. And those prisons, those mental prisons, are in our minds. In first place, because of all the experiences that we have lived in home, we have to free ourselves from all this. Or, because of everything we learned and saw in school, in colleges, for all the movies that we have seen. That is why. What, what are you watching now? All that is remaining here. And all the songs that we have heard, the friends and family members with which we have spoken, when they come and say things, everything is left there. But not only by the lived experiences, but also by the traumas. And what are the traumas? The experiences that are strong in us, like the abuses. Yesterday I saw a video that was viral of a trainer of tennis beating the player who was his daughter. I never had seen such violence. He pulled her hair, threw her to the floor, and kicked her. And then another player that's very known said, that is nothing compared to what my father did to me. We can't even imagine the traumas that many have to go through. And there are other traumas. The death of a family member, divorce of our parents. That is a trauma. And as I said before, we are not bound to the traumas of our past, but to the lies that we believed because of those traumas. Because many renounced the trauma. The trauma is already gone. It was the lie 
that we believe because of that trauma. A girl that is abused sexually believes that she's a prostitute. That is the lie. A boy that is abused believes that he is gay. That is the mental stronghold. A person that hurtful things are said, thinks that doesn't, that is useless, that is a loser, that doesn't deserve to be loved. So, all this was before knowing Christ. Nevertheless, the devil, even before knowing Jesus, continues setting thoughts. That is why there are Christians today that sleep with their girlfriends, that get drunk, that say rude words, that say lies, that live with fear, that are pessimistic, that get divorced, or that believe that they can do everything that what they see on Netflix. And that is why, look what Romans 1.21 says, although they knew the Lord, and I highlight, they are Christians, they did not glorify Him as God, but their thinking became futile. Everything is in the mind, because the mind is the, sen the controlling center of all our being, and there is where the enemy is going to work. And their hearts were darkened. This verse in the New Living Translation says, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God, or even give Him thanks. Those who arrived late to the praise and worship time. Instead, they started to think foolish ideas of what God was. The new idea, God is love. That is why God accepts certain behaviors. Those are silly ideas. And as a result, the mind became dark and confused. But watch out. Here it's speaking to us, the Christians. This can happen to us. It happened to David. A man according to the heart of God. It says in 1 Chronicles 1.21, Satan rose against Israel and caused David to take a census, provoked. All of a sudden, he had a, a desire. Watch out! We must not allow ourselves to be dragged like that. That is why fast is so important, because it's a way of exercising control. If I do not control my food, I cannot control uh, a provocation like this. The enemy can set something in my life. He said it in Judas. Judah was a man just like us. John 13, 2 says, the devil already had incited. It has to do with what? The mind. What are you setting in your mind? He had incited Judah to betray Jesus. But also, he influenced Peter to Watch out with this, which is very common among us, to see things from the human perspective. That was Peter's sin. Because Jesus told him, walk away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You know why? Because you are seeing things merely from a human point of view. I think... It seems for me, I do not agree. Have you heard about it? They look like Christians. Not from the point of view of God. Keep this in mind. HP or HD. Human perspective or divine perspective. Who controls your mind? God or the devil? through your human perspective. Luke 6, 45 says, He who is good from the abundance that he treasures in his heart, it's also in the mind, produces the good. 
But he who is bad, who does wicked things, from the wickedness of his heart, his mind, produces the bad. That is why all the good in life starts with a thought. If you want healing, your healing starts with a thought. And I illustrate this with the famous case of the woman that had been for 12 years suffering hemorrhages. In Mark 5.27, she had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe, for she thought her miracle started in her mind. If I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. But watch out, because disease also starts in the mind. Unbelief starts in the mind. Watch out with what you are thinking. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because I think it. Because I thought it's that I read in the newspapers what they're saying. And watch out, I'm talking about COVID. Many haven't overcome COVID because of what they think. COVID is already over, but many are still bound to COVID because of this. The healing, the freedom starts in the mind, but also the disease. The bad starts in the mind. Look what Joseph told his brothers after all he had to go through on their behalf in Genesis 15:20. You intended to harm me. They were envious toward him. And that's how individually they started to think to harm him. And that's what they did. And they harmed him because everything started in the mind. And an example of this struggle in our mind, because the battlefield is in our mind, there's a, a battle between our thoughts and the devil's thoughts. An example of this, we see it in 2 Samuel 11, 1. It says, when kings normally go out to war, David stayed in Jerusalem. And in one afternoon when he woke up from his bed, and what I say, what does a person waking up so late? He started to walk on the roof of the palace, everybody working, and he was playing watching internet, watching Netflix. And from there, he saw a woman that was bathing. Well, at least that's not seen in Netflix. And the woman was extremely beautiful. And in that moment, he started that struggle between the thoughts of God and the thoughts from the devil. Remember those? those cartoons where all of a sudden a demon appeared and then the, the angel? That's true. And this that I share is what happens with all of us. Men, when we see a, wo a beautiful woman, the thoughts from God say, don't do it. Don't call her. Tell her nothing. Don't continue thinking in her. To David, he told him, do not invite her to your palace. Do not write her on Facebook. Do not get involved. Do not hear that song that's going to affect you. Think in the consequences if you fail. Your life is over. Your ministry, if you have a ministry, you're going to lose credibility, your children will not believe in you, you're going to get sick, you're going to be depressive, the sword will never be apart from your home and the blessings will stop. That is, those are the thoughts from God. But on the other side came the other thoughts. Oh, there's nothing bad with that. You're just watching. You're not going to sin with her. And when we give up to that thought, oh, it's just a coffee. 
then an adventure all are doing it no no one will find out you deserve it because you have been reading your Bible you have been going to church you deserve it God forgives you haven't you heard message from the grace Paul describes the battle of the Christian to take those thoughts captive in 2 Corinthians 10 3 5 the weapons for which we fight are not from the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought it talks about all because some take only three it's every thought to make it obedient to Christ in the living translation we capture the rebellious thoughts we capture and we nail them on the cross so I want to show the difference between those who have allowed that battle for their mind be won by the devil with those who have let allowed the Holy Spirit to win Romans 8 5 those who are governed by the sinful nature in other translations by the flesh think in sinful things but those who are controlled by the Spirit Holy Spirit think in the things that please the Spirit in what do you think because that is going to show you who won the battle for your mind and we are those who decide who is the winner Romans 12 2 says do not imitate the behaviors nor the customs of this world better allow that God do you see it's my option you Andrew have to allow God to transform you in a new person by changing changing the way of thinking what happens is that in that battle for our mind there is a knight who is the Holy Spirit and there is a liar a manipulator a professional in deceiving that is called the devil the spirit never will force us to give him the control of our mind instead Satan the father of lies the manipulator the most powerful manipulator remember what he told Eve in Genesis 3 1 truly God told you that truly he questions God what, what is Christian today in the Christian churches regarding certain things truly God said that no that was the Old Testament truly God said then he said you certainly it's not true what God says God is the liar you will not die God knows that when you do that oof, the devil is liar and manipulator he knows what are our weaknesses he knows who has the weakness of drinking the weakness of women of men of gambling he knows and there is where the attack is he knows our insecurities our fears our anxieties the patterns the thinking patterns that we inherited from our parents he knows them and around that he sets thoughts he's going to set videos 
He's going to set obsessions in our mind. The devil also, says the Bible, clothes himself as an angel of light and manipulates the verses of the Bible to deceive the Christians. But also, he is going to obsess us for our interpretations, which are they are not absolute truths or our points of view. You know why? So he will drag us out of the church. Because I will say things that are going to disagree with the interpretation of others. But one thing is to skip it, but then we get obsessed. Oh, I have to, and I have to say this and tell him this. It's an obsession, but also against other preachers. You know what for? To divide the Christians. Because the main purpose that the devil has is to divide us. In difference of the devil, the Holy Spirit gives us the freedom of choosing. Because to freedom the Lord has called us. But it's not a freedom to choose wrong. Because many say, in Christ I can get drunk. No, it's freedom to not getting drunk. It's the freedom to choose right. Look what Romans 12, 2 says, Allow that God transform you. It talks there, I am the one who chooses. Allow that God transform you in new person. How does He do it? By changing the way you think. So, the winner of this battle for our mind is determined by the way each one of us answers to the same trial. So, a person can see the trial like an opportunity to advance, to conquer, to become rich, to overcome, whatever. And another will see it as a way of falling. And I'm speaking here of things such like COVID and the dollar, how it increased. Today, some are dying because the dollar increased so much. Whoa! How can I make money with this? And I illustrated with David. The Israelites saw Goliath, you can say COVID-19 and dollar, from the human perspective. David saw it from DP, divine perspective. And I read it. In 1 Samuel 17, 4, a famous warrior born from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. His name was COVID. Oh, I'm sorry, Goliath. <laughs> Dollar. And he had a height 5,000 pesos, excuse me, 3 meters. And he had a bronze helmet and he he wore a coat of scale armor weighing 5,000 shekels. Goliath stood before the Israelite soldiers and defied them. Imagine his voice. Why don't you choose someone that can stand against me? If he is able to come against me and kill me, we will serve you. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will be subject to us and will serve us. And it says, when he heard what the Philistines said, human perspective, Saul, the king, and all the Israelites were worried and had a lot of fear. Why? Human perspective. But we're going to see the other case, David, divine perspective. He saw Goliath as I see the COVID. When they told me, take off the mask, never again. I said that demon again. Why? Because it's a demon. 
I do not travel on Avianca because they force you to use a mask. Did you hear Avianca? You lost this beauty. I see the daughter in the same way. Or I'm trying. Today, I'm limping a little bit. David, it says, was son of Jesse. His three older children had marched to the war with Saul. And one day Jesse told his son, take this bag of roasted bread and go soon to the camp to give them to your brothers. Find out how they are doing and bring a proof that they are okay. You will find them fighting against the Philistines. The father was imagining tremendous warriors. And David fulfilled Jesse's instructions. He went to the camp in the moment when the soldiers were giving shouts of war. The shouts of war from the warriors. And he left his load with the keeper of the supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath stepped out from the lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Why? By human perspective. Some said, do you see how this man keeps coming out, defying Israel? He who overcomes him and kills him, the king will grant him riches and will give his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes like the Colombian tax reform. It's in the Bible. David asked those who were with him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and adds, watch out, and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who does this COVID think he is, or this dollar, or whatever it is? Who does he think he is? That he should defy the armies of the living God who dares to bring fear the Christians. Whoever kills him, they repeated, shall be giving a compensation. And some heard what David had said and told Saul, and he called him. Then David told Saul, divine perspective, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. The winner in his mind, who is it? It's God. But Saul replied, human perspective, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young boy and he has been a warrior from his youth. And then we go, we see the divine perspective. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the, its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, the same thing can do with that pagan COVID or with that dollar, the same. Because it is defying the army of the living God. And we could set other names there, but I don't want to mention them. Of certain governors. The Lord that freed me from the paws of the lion and the bear will also free me from the power of that Philistine. I ask, who wins the battle in your mind? Divine perspective or human perspective? Well, today you have to take decisions because the difference 
between those who are like David and those who are like the Israelites is the way that each one processes in their minds the events of their lives. And that determines what we feel and what we do. Everything is in the mind. How are you processing? Because some imagine the worst. Oh, they're going to kill me. The boss calls them. I'm going to be thrown out of the company. I'm going to be stolen. I'm going to become sick. I'm going to have COVID. I'm going to die. But others imagine the best. They're going to promote me. When they are called, no one or nothing can harm me. I'm going to be healed. Or when I come in, every demon, all COVID, walks out. The bacteria flee. All is here. This is an opportunity to show who am I or who is the God in whom I trust. I, each one of us individually, must decide who is the winner of that battle to erase all that lie by pressing delete what do you have to do four or five steps first thing is to believe that we have the mind of christ in first corinthians 2 16 but we understand these things and in the context of the chapter so we do not read it is the marvelous things that god has given us why because we understand this because we have the mind of christ we have to believe it. Every morning in my prayer time, I have the mind of Christ. And I am a silly person. I don't remember names in my humanity. But when I am under the anointing of the Lord, I have the mind of Christ. And that is what we must declare. And in second place, we must repent of those thoughts. And remember that the word repentance in Greek is metanoieio, which means a change of mind. Stop thinking how you are thinking. And I know how you are thinking because of your behavior. Your behavior says that you are doubting, that you are living under human perspective. Change your mind. Simon, says the Bible, for many years had been a witchcraft, winning money, stealing the people with the demonic power that he had. But all of a sudden, he saw the disciples of the Lord praying for the people and power came out of them. And he wanted that power and he went to buy it. That is why Peter told him in Acts 8.20, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking. Everything is in the mind that is possible to buy God's gift. Repent, change your mind from your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Maybe He will forgive your evil thoughts. Today there are people that must ask forgiveness to the Lord for their bad thoughts. So, what thoughts, contrary, do you have that God says in His Word? Words such as, God does not exist, God does not love me, He's not with me. Or, it can be, no, it's not a sin to get drunk, it's not a sin to be adulterous, it's not a sin to, to have an abortion, or God made me like that, or gay or bad-tempered, or alcoholic. Repentance. Third, I must identify the bad thoughts behind the behavior of the wickedness of my parents. 
to break that pattern and decides against that kind of life, this son refuses to worship idols on the mountains and you said there what your parents do, that pattern, and decides against that kind of life, this son refuses to worship idols on the mountains and you said there what your parents do, decides not to repeat that. That person will not die because of the sins their parents do, certainly will live. And the fourth, not allow that those sinful thoughts continue in our minds. Romans 6, 12, do not allow yourselves that sin reign in your bodies, in your mortal bodies, nor obey your wicked desires, but offer yourself to God. And finally, and this is the most beautiful, is to allow that God transform us. Look at these verses, Ephesians 4.23, allow that the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes, put on your new nature. Or Romans 12.2, allow that God transform you in new persons. How? By changing the way you think. Wow! That is what I do in my morning prayers. I remain silent and identify those thoughts and I allow that He changes them. It's that simple. Prayer is a time that we discern all that to change, to repent, and to allow Him to transform us. Let us all stand up and, Lord, we give you thanks because we were moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And I want you to believe this. And we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. And we have the mind of Christ. But today we recognize that there is a battle for controlling or governing our mind between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And I decide who is the winner. But I recognize, Lord, that I have decided wrongfully, that I have been like Israel's army. I see everything from human perspective. I think, I reason, it looks like, I believe. I don't even consult your word. I don't even read the scriptures. Forgive me, Lord. But today, I take the decision of overcoming the Goliath. And I want you to say, who is the Goliath in your lives? The Goliath of COVID? Goliath of the dollar? Goliath of... Each one's going to mention his own. And I am not going to see it from the human perspective. I renounce to fear. I renounce to be those who flee. I renounce to give place. In the name of Christ Jesus, I today rise up as that new generation that we sang before, that new generation that will change this nation. And instead of seeing Goliath as the end of my life, I see it as an opportunity Today I am going to overcome, I'm going to go forward. I am going to live under God's perspective. I set my life on the altar and I renounce to these thoughts and start to renounce to those thoughts that God clearly has told you in your mind. I change those thoughts. I give them to you in the name that is above every name. 
and I want specific prayers in the name that is above every name because my healing starts in the moment when I stop thinking how I've been thinking until today because my marriage will flourish when I change the way I think because our nation will start to be blessed when we the Colombians change the way we think and we will do it here in our church there in our homes those who are connected today I change the way I think no more I will see the world and the circumstances from the human perspective I see it today from your perspective in the name of Christ Jesus You can subscribe to El Lugar de Su Presencia YouTube channel. In that way, you will enjoy of all our benefits.